And anything I pushed, when I pushed it across, I pushed it because it was stable. So the GitHub repository, that was older, but stable in code. My stuff, newer, but unstable. And then I found branching. And uh, you know, I didn't actually know when I started using Git that that's actually where the power lies in these distributed uh, source control solutions is the, the branching possibilities. So when I found, uh, found that out, I was able to basically say, okay, I'm gonna branch, and inside of this feature branch that, that I'm working on, who cares about stability? I, I'll commit all I want, you know, when I'm done, I'll push back to my local local right. machine, and then when I'm done with whatever, you know, whenever I want to push back to GitHub, then I'll push back to GitHub. And I kind of split it up into these, kind of these three areas, where now I've pushed the instability kind of all the way across. When I, the, the unstable code, that, that's way over there on the, on the development branches. Now I have these two branches right here that both deal with stable code. One deals with the, sta the newer stabler code of, that's undergoing active development. And then over here, this isn't the active development branch anymore. What's on GitHub, that's not really what's undergoing active development. It's older code, but it's stable. So if we look at these two branches here, where they're both, they both contain stable code, active development, I don't know what the term, it's not passive. That one, the, the one that is not development, is, is over here. We take these two branches out, that's GitFlow. That, th those are the two main branches of GitFlow. Now, I know we usually think about, uh, it, coming from Subversion, we might think about the idea of remote servers and you know, local, local clients and all that. Um, <coughs> the GitFlow model is really just about the repository. So, these two branches exist on my local machine. They exist on the GitHub repository or the central repository. They exist on my coworkers' machines. So I know I started out kind of with that client-server mentality, but again, just go to this idea of the two branches and kind of their basic purpose. We have the develop branch, which for those of us who are probably used to using Git, this is one thing that's a little confusing. That would probably be what we're used to as master, the, the main branch. And you'll notice, They've named this branch, which contains kind of the stable production code, as master. There's really no way around this. That's just the, what they decided would be the kind of the naming convention. So if, if, it, if it's weird to think about, you might just in your mind want to mentally say, okay, the develop branch, that's, that's old master. And the, what's master now? That's, that's the production branch. So, that's probably the one thing to kind of wrap your head around that might take a little bit of time, is just that the naming convention is a little different than what you might be used to. But if you just remember what the purposes are, it kind of sinks in. The develop branches, develop, <coughs> active, active developments will be happening based around the develop branch. And the master branch, that's what is, that's what's decided to be stable. That's, that's when development stops and we push everything over to, to master. So that's why I say you can think of it kind of as production. That's what other people or other servers that might need to use a code, that's the code they use. But both of them are, are still state of code. Everyone, everyone cool so far? Okay. So we, those are the two main branches. We do have other branches to help with development. These are feature branches, release branches, and hotfixes. So as we're developing, um, we want to develop a feature. We basically take the code that's in the develop branch and we start a new branch for that feature. We work on it, we make the, the local commits, we do whatever we need to. And then when we're done developing that particular feature, we merge it back into develop. It's pretty straightforward, I, I would hope. Obviously, there are some issues that, that can pop up with this, and, and I'll get to those in a bit uh, when I discuss some of the kind of the shortcomings that you'll need to deal with. But, uh, so you can have as many feature branches as you want. There's just as many for, uh, as many features are undergoing active development. Um, you also notice they, they disappear when, when they're done. So we, we merge, we do a fast forward merge um, back to develop. So you do keep all of the, uh, all the history that, that's, uh, that's in those feature branches, but they get merged back into the back into the develop branch. I feel like I'm missing something that I need to say here, but I can't think of it. So I'm going to move on. And if anyone has a question, go ahead. I'll, I'll bring something up with the 
first feature going in and the second feature doesn't have the first feature com conflict? Is that what you... Yeah, that, that, uh, the, uh, the, the merging issues right here will be pretty much kind of the, one of the shortcomings. Um, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a bit. So, yeah. so when we're done with our feature and it's time to release, we've decided, okay, we're done with feature set A. It's time to, time to kick out our code to release. We then establish a new branch. We establish the release branch. We copy the code from develop to, to release. This is where we check, double check anything that needs to be finalized. So, you know, we, we are, we're running through QA and we find some particular issue and that issue needs to get fixed before we finally push, you know, all the way to master. So we make those changes. And then because we've made changes, not only are we, as you would probably expect, going to push to master, usually give it a, a tag to so mark it as this is a release of 1.0. Any of those changes that we might have made do need to be uh, realized back on develop. So we, we actually split it across and do a merge to both branches. That way anybody who's pulling off of develop has access to any of the changes that we made that we discovered while we were finalizing the release. So that's why it split, splits across there. And then we can start on uh, more feature branches at the bottom, and we have four of those feature branches that start off all the changes that we made while finalizing the release. But of course, this release could have an issue, and if it does, we'll need to fix it. So we do have one final uh, type of branch that we're going to create, which is the hotfix branch. So for hotfixes, instead of pulling from develop, we're trying to fix a problem that, that exists on master in this case problem needs to be dealt with now. And so, while develop may have moved on in the past, we're going to pull from master where the problem is, fix the problem, and of course, since we've done something to the code, that needs to be um, present in develop, so again, we will do that split. We'll co come down here and establish a new tag so that we can keep the history of master intact. We're not going not to override um, the history of master. We're not going to get rid of the, the old tag, that sort of thing. We're just going to establish a new New one down here. And uh, that, that's actually the flow. That, that's, that's the methodology right there. I imagine if you guys have, have worked with uh, with Gibbs and large groups, you probably have already established certain aspects of this. Now, when I said it wasn't software, I, I was kind of lying. Um, Git has uh, the, you know, the, the ability to alias new commands. And so there are a group of command line tools that will help you to just do some of these issues. If you look, look back here, you'll notice that for some of these, to, to accomplish some of these tools, you know, merging here and merging here and removing the branch, that's going to be like three, four different commands at once. You can do this all manually if you want, but it kind of gets annoying. So the git flow command line tools, they're basically just, uh, they're basically just bash scripts that help Python, the Python scripts, I think now, but they're basically just iterative uh, scripts that run the basic git commands behind the scenes for you. Just a way of kind of minimizing the annoyance of uh, doing all those things at once. Um, they're very nice to have. They, they, they simplify things a lot. And because they use the git alias, they, uh, they're just another git, git command. So git space flow space whatever the commands you, you want to do. And if you're using ZSH, which uh, is a dang awesome terminal and uh, is way cool, um, which they'll be talking about tomorrow, I think, if anyone's coming back tomorrow, um, there's a whole bunch of autocomplete stuff that you can find that will do autocomplete with Gitflow as well, which uh, also makes sense for you. So if you're interested in all this, if this sounds pretty cool, it's really easy to get uh, started on, on a Gitflow project. Since it's technically just Git underneath it all, if you have a, uh, you can do it manually by establishing those various branches on your own. And if you're using the Gitflow tools, you just need to go to an existing Git repository. Or if you want to start a Git repository and use Gitflow, just do Gitflow in it instead of Git in it. And uh, you can just kind of start on that. So, let's see some examples. So this is my fake terminal. Is, is that too small? Can anyone, anyone see the, the font here? Yeah. So, this is, the, this is actual output that, that I actually did. I just didn't want it to break or do something stupid, so <laughs> copied it down. So we're going to make our project. Go into our project, 
And uh, we're going to start off with git flow init, which will basically wrap a couple commands all together at once. So we'll start a new uh, git repository. There's no branches. Here's the one issue um, with using git flow. Since it is just a model, it is just a methodology, there's nothing that enforces uh, these particular actions. And the configuration that we're going to set up here is stored inside of .git uh, config. So it's not going to be passed along with the, uh, with the Git repository. So if you have multiple people using Git flow, or if you have people who are going to be downloading from, from your repository and, and uh, pushing back, you're going to need to establish, either you're going to want to go with the default naming conventions here, or if not, you're going to want to let other people know what the naming conventions you're going to be using are, because there's nothing enforcing that uh, people will follow those uh, the conventions you set up. They're, they're guidelines, not rules, that sort of thing. And so if, if people choose different naming conventions, their naming conventions will exist in their Git repository that they're using, and will exist side by side, along with the branches that, <coughs> that you make with your naming conventions. So you're going to need to make sure that if other people are using it, that they are um, doing things the same way as you are. And that's another reason why, while you may be thinking, oh, I'll just, I'll just name develop to master so I'm comfortable because that behaves the same and I'll name master production, you're going to have to probably keep that down somewhere and make sure that people know about it. And that's one reason to probably stick with the defaults. Just that way you can tell people, yeah, we use GitFlow. And then people will probably just assume, okay, I'll just go with the, the default name conventions. It makes things easier. You should put the configuration under Git itself. So I'm going to just uh, name a production release as master, uh, branch for the next uh, release to oh. develop. Sorry? Sorry, I just put it through. Oh, okay. no, sorry. Um, call the feature branches feature, release, hot fix. I'll, I'll talk about support, but I'm not really going to deal with it here. It's an experimental branch right now. It's, it's present in the commands, <coughs> but uh, nobody's really quite decided exactly how it works yet, and I'll get into why. And uh, you, can, you can make a prefix for your tags if you want to have the tags that you make uh, automatically have a specific prefix applied to them. And so we're done. And we have, we have our branches. And if we look at uh, our git status, we'll see that we're on the development branch, ready to, ready to start. Now, there, is, there, there are things that belong on the development branch in terms of commits and people working on, on the code. And those would be things that are in common um, beyond the feature branches. So configuration files. Uh, readme's, um, unit tests, if, uh, if they're not, if unit tests aren't coming in with a particular feature branch, it, it's, it's totally legit to, uh, to, to do that kind of stuff on development. You probably shouldn't ever actually be doing commits or anything on master, but uh, develop, that, that's fine, that there are things that go there. So, in fact, let's, uh, let's make a readme. And uh, this is the readme file. Save that, and uh, we'll say, okay, initial readme end. Good. There we go. So we have our first commit on develop. Now we want to start a new feature. So we do git flow uh, feature, and then we do start. Um, with, with, uh, git flow, with git flow, all of the uh, particular branches, they start, if it's one of the other branches, they start and they finish. So in this case, we're going to start a new feature, our awesome new feature. And uh, there we go. It'll tell you what it actually did. We made a new branch, which is a feature slash awesome new feature. And uh, we're now on that branch, and we're ready to start going. And it even tells us that when we're done, to get flow finish, and uh, we'll finish the awesome new feature. Um, <coughs> you'll notice uh, the branch itself is actually named feature slash. That, that's how Git will keep track of, uh, of things, is based off of what you've defined in the config file, it's just a regular branch. And so it just keeps track of it by name, just by parsing out the names. So in this case, so for like feature branch, we, we call it feature branch, but it's really, you're creating a branch for each feature, right? Mm -hmm. this is okay. Yeah. So I, I didn't want to get it muddled up with too many lines. No. Yeah. 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 yeah each, each feature, the, the benefit of going this way, and, and we'll get into it into a bit, is just basically, since we split off from develop into this feature, this feature is being developed independently of any other features that might be being worked on at the same time right now. So we're not going to be stepping on other people's feet at this point. You know, all things
things come due eventually. And, uh, but uh, it gives us basically a pristine area where we can do whatever it is that we need to do to make sure that what we're working on gets done. And we're not going to have to worry about other people. So we'll touch a new file here, make, make that, and we'll add it, we'll commit it. This is our awesome new feature, this, this empty file. And there we go. And yeah, that's good enough for now. So let's, let's finish it up. Git flow feature, finish, awesome new feature. Boom. And you can see it did quite a few things right there. We, first of all, we, we've switched back to develop. We've done a fast forward merge. <coughs> so all of the commit history of the feature branch is now part of the commit history of develop. The branch itself was deleted. It does not exist at all anymore. And uh, we're, we're ready to go. And supposing now that that's all that we actually needed to do. So we're good to uh, release right now. Remind me, fast forward merge is compared to a duplicate merge. What is fast forward exactly? Um, with, with this particular merge, um, with, with fast forward merge, we're going to keep the commit history of, of the feature branch. I mean, is it any different than git merge? Um, so you can do two, mer two types of merges. You can, you can merge, you can squash the sure. commits. Mm -hmm. That is not normal, but yeah. yeah. And so this one might be doing it. Fast forward is just a regular merge. Just yeah. regular merge, yeah. Sorry. So I just try to make sure I understand. Just if you're used to just the squashing, you know, before no, with that. That yeah. always ends. Yeah. Uh, so we will start our release branch. We establish now a new branch of release, uh, 1.0. And uh, at this point would be where we would test everything, make sure that the release is, is good to go. I'm going to assume it's good to go. So we're just going to finish it. Um, just because of the, the nature of things, I'm going to just tell myself to remember to put the quotes around the 1.0 because weird things can happen if I uh, put a period in there and don't, uh, don't do that. So we have a, uh, a commit message for, for the merge, which uh, the default looks fine. So I'm just going to go with that. And then we, we have a message that's going to accompany the tag that we're going to establish on, uh, on the master branch. So I'm going to say, yeah, this is release 1.0. That looks good. So we'll save that. Developed establish 1.0, and any changes we have are going to be pushed back to develop. And uh, now we can start on. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, we uh, we are actually technically on the master branch. Just in case you have anything you need to, to finish out and do, we uh, we're over here to, to work on that. I don't need to do anything, so I'm going to check out develop. We'll go back there, and uh, we'll start another feature. One other question on that one. Mm -hmm. I guess in the environment I have been working, we have a remote branch. You can check it out, but until you do a git push, it doesn't actually go out there. Will git flow push it out? Um, it's, uh, no, just, uh, it, it's just the, 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 the basic, until you do a, a manual push, git push to, to the remote. So is master, in this case, just local to my box? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, there, there is the command I, I didn't really cover it here. But uh, develop and master are both uh, both linked to, to a remote. Mm -hmm. If you need to have the other branches um, also um, put when, when push occurs, push to remote, there is the command of uh, git flow, um, the branch name, so feature, hotfix, release, whatever, uh, publish, which will then push that to, to the remote order. Um, but no, all, all, all this is, is local. Um, well, only, only master and develop. We'll start our new branch here, and uh, oh crap, something blew up. Something's horrible. Something's happened. So we've got to go over here and uh, and fix on master. Um, for some reason, I committed an empty file, and that was really stupid. So we'll start a hotfix. You'll notice that the hotfix name is actually 1.0.1, diff because the hotfix is going to be changing master. We're going to be establishing a new tag. So it's going to name, uh, give it a tag name of 1.0.1. Now, even though we've started on a new feature branch over here from develop, the problem is based on master. So in this case, we're actually going to pull from master over to hotfix to, to, do, to, to fix that problem. Go into here into the file, and uh, we forgot to put something in there. So save that. We'll uh, add, uh, add that text and uh, commit. And uh, we'll finish this hotfix. Um, everything's fine. Again, 
command, there's the, the merge uh, command, so we'll just go with default there, that looks fine. We need a tag message, so this is really just one of we need to fix this folder. Save that, and boom. We're up to 1.0.1 on master. The changes we made are now pushed back to develop. So that file now has contents in, in the develop branch. And uh, we'll look here. When we're done with the hotfix, we're supposed to be done. So we're not going to actually go back to master in this case, because it's supposed to be just something small. So we're back on develop. We uh, look at the different branches that are currently in existence. We have develop. We have the feature, another feature branch. And we have master. Is that me? No, no, you're fine. Um, so I'm going to go back to, to the feature so that I can keep working on that. And uh, we'll make another file. <coughs> Add that and commit it. And, uh, you know, and so on. That's just, uh, that's basically just how it works. Like that. So, it looks like it works really well and all, but there are some real world issues that need to be dealt with. And I found that most, most of the people who talk about Git flow online really like it. They don't really talk too much about these, these issues. And these are actual issues that we need to address uh, the issues of continuous integration, the issues of merging, the issues of defining what technically as a hotfix, as well as uh, dealing with who's actually using your master branch. So, I don't know if you guys are aware, but there's currently kind of an ideological battle going on in terms of development styles. Um, hopefully everyone here has heard of the idea of continuous integration, and I don't know if you have heard of it or not, but uh, also the idea of feature branching. And these are two ideas that are like oil and water. They don't really mix. I don't think anyone's really figured out a way to have them mix yet. They both have their benefits, they both have their drawbacks. Um, with continuous integration, we're testing all the time. Um, we probably have a, have a build server that's going to check upon every basic commit back to the central repository, or anytime the changes are made, we're just going to always be uh, evaluating the, the impact of those changes. So we get constant feedback, we get constant, uh, constant um, news to our, our consumers. Uh, it, it's a really good system. With feature branching, though, the developers get a, uh, you know, we can get that pristine environment that's kind of cut off from everybody else where no one's going to be messing with our code while, while we're working on things. It's really nice for developers. So we have the problem of uh, where do we do the testing when we have feature branching? And Gitflow is a feature branching model. Um, are we going to just always, uh, you know, local developers obviously should be doing some testing on their machines, but is everybody going to be hosting a continuous integration server on their own thing? Is every single feature branch going to go through that sort of thing? That, that's going to get really annoying really quick. But you know, project managers love continuous integration. Developers love feature branching. I don't really see a way to, 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 to solve this. So you guys are going to have to, if you are using Gitflow or really any particular uh, model that, that's similar, you're going to need to decide how big a feature is before it gets to be, uh, you're going to split it into a smaller feature. And also you're going to need to decide how long a feature branch should be allowed to live before it's merged back into develop. Because if a feature branch is just sticking by itself for a day, for a week, for a month, that amount of time that it's, it's going, it's not being tested. And that kind of is breaking the ba basic idea of continuous integration. So the, the longer it's allowed to live, the less you're adhering to, uh, to, to that constant testing mentality. The other issue is merging, and uh, this is this is a problem that all feature branching uh, methodologies have to deal with. Obviously, if uh, you know if Sue is making making her changes and merges them back in here, and she's the first one to merge, everything will be fine. You know, it's now now Sue's code. But if Alice is over here working on this and she's going to merge back in, you know, what happens at this point could be that everything goes to hell in a handbasket. There's a couple solutions. Um, one of the popular ones is that uh, Alice could uh, rebase from, from develop before she merges. So pull everything from develop back here. She can deal with the issues of merging her code with uh, how development has advanced. Or she could uh, merge and just deal with it at this point, where things have, have, uh, have, have gotten together. But we still have the problem of, in that case, we're still dealing with uh, Git, Git's really good about doing merges. It has a really good uh, uh, diff engine inside that will do textual merges pretty well. Although all of us are sure have hit issues where it just kind of throws its hands up in the air for bizarre reasons. 
but that doesn't actually account for functionality. If they've both been working on the same function, it could be that they merge together without any problem, but one of them has fundamentally changed the way a function behaves and could break the entire system. So the only real solution that I can see, you know, beyond deciding where you want to deal with those merges, by either rebasing here or they're just merging down here, you're going to need to have a pretty good robust testing system in place. So that when the code is finally, when the code is here and it seems like it's okay, you're going to have, have to have a way to make sure that you know that it's okay. So having good code coverage, having good unit testing is pretty dang important um, when it comes to this situation here. Um, also, there's the question of what's a hot fix? You know, how big is a problem that occurs on master? You know, um, because of the basic idea of, Fine, you know, we, uh, we have the hotfix here, we fix it, it goes back. Development continues, something breaks. We aren't pulling from this advanced uh, development here. We're pulling from the old code on master. So even though we fix the code, we push the fix back, this, this hotfix has nothing to do with development, which has continued on in, you know, behind it. And that's great for a small problem, but what if it's something huge? You know, in some cases, you might just need to roll back, take whatever it is that, you're, that, that is using the master branch, and just manually push it back to an earlier tag, develop a whole bunch of new feature branches, and roll out an entirely new release that fixes the problem. But again, you're going to have to decide where that happens. That's, that's not going to be that When you, um, like, so if you're, if you're doing those merges like that and there are conflicts, I guess the JIT git flow is when it's doing its stuff. You know, will let you know there's conflicts, right? And right. So you can if and so does it recover well from those two? Like it, if you're trying to finish it off and it says, well, you got some conflicts. I can only do three of the five steps. Yeah. If you didn't fin fix it, finish it. You know, uh, you know, finish the other two steps. Does that make sense? Um, every time I've done it, I've had to do it manually. Oh really? But uh, but you know, it's it's usually it's like three or four steps okay. and. Um, as long as you kind of pay attention each time, hopefully you're getting to know what, what particular is there. And the worst that will happen is you'll have, uh, when you're done, you'll have a branch still existing that maybe shouldn't exist. So, yeah, every now and then you might need to go through and just manually prune some things, just kind of clean some things up. But, uh, no, it, it's, it's the, the command line tools aren't, aren't, that, uh, aren't that powerful to, to report where they fail and whatever. I know that they want to get there, and that they're undergoing that. And finally, the other issue is who, oh, there's a bracket. That's wonderful. Okay. So, who's using master? Uh, Gitflow is great if you're working with software as a service or some, something, like, something like that where you can be very well assured that people who are using code that comes from mas master, that they're using the most recent thing. But if you're designing GUI desktop components, if you're doing mobile development, if you're doing something where you can't be absolutely certain, that everybody is on 1.0.2, and some people are on 1.0 or, or some other version number. Um, a hotfix really, a hotfix pulls from the most recent master. If someone has a problem back here, a hotfix is not going to do anything for you. Besides that, we have the problem. This is where the support branch comes in. There, there is the support branch. A support branch will basically establish a hotfix from a, a, a specified previous master uh, tag. But the reason it's, it's experimental is because they keep going back and forward on how it's actually supposed to behave um, at this point, where, where it splits back off. The support branch, when, you're, when you finish the support branch, it will create a new tag. So you can create an intermediary tag, which will be um, named whatever you want and uh, will contain the, the changed code. But what do you do in terms of the change that you've made, pushing them back to develop? That, you know, it's great if, if, if you're this close that you can push it back to develop, but if you're fixing something at 1.0 and develop is basically working towards a 2.3 release, where do those changes actually go? Do you just lose them? Do you just throw them away into the ether when, when you're done and you fix what's on master? So that, that's another issue where if, if you're not dealing with uh, something where you can control the, the versions, you're going to have to kind of deal with, uh, with things on your own. It's still kind of wonky. If that's your situation, I'm sorry. I'm a web guy. I, I don't have to deal with that so much. We just update our servers. But being a web guy, there's some really cool things you can do with uh, with Gitflow. And 
And one of the fun things is basically that each of these branches actually corresponds to a server in terms of the typical development environment. So the feature branches, those are temporary branches that live on the different developer machines. And uh, you know, one of the fun things is when I say that you can publish them to, to remote, uh, uh, remote uh, repositories, you can publish them obviously to <coughs> remote developers. So developers can share a feature branch if they're the ones only working on the branch, and they can push and pull from each other. And when they finally finish the branches, those branches will be deleted. And the next time one of them pulls from the other, it'll, it'll be gone. And so that, that's pretty nice. Um, the development branch, since that contains code that's supposed to be stable with the features in, in, in place, but maybe not ready for release yet, that's a great place for your unit testing, for your continuous integration server, if you have Hudson or, or Jenkins or something like that that's uh, continuously testing, that's where the continuous tests will occur. And so that, you can, um, we have it set up right now with Jenkins that uh, it looks at GitHub and any time that the, uh, the develop branch is updated, that's when the tests get run. The release branch corresponds to the QA server, or staging, or whatever it is that you want to call it. I don't know. Um, but basically, what we want to do, we haven't gotten there yet. There, there's a lot of things for us to still figure out in terms of uh, if this is actually a safe, smart idea. But what we want to do is we want to basically say that the QA server, we want it to also be continuously uh, pinging uh, the uh, GitHub or maybe even establish a push methodology, but if, if a release branch exists, because it only exists when we're advancing a release, but if it exists, we want it to pull down that code and then update with the release branch and put that on the QA server automatically, which would be pretty dang cool. Then we can develop on there, make sure we have everything good to go. And if we want to do the same thing with master, where if there's a new tag that exists, we would like to have the production server basically also pull it down automatically. We're still not sure if that's actually an incredibly stupid idea, which it possibly could be. So, um, but uh, we would keep a log and uh, a commit history in, in terms of that. But even if we do it manually, um, it's still this lines up directly with the production server. And so we, we have a, a clear tag basis for, for what we what we do. And uh, yeah, so in conclusion, uh, Git flows not not software, kind of, sort of. Uh, has command line tools. Um, it's, it covers about 80% of what you need. It's uh, probably, if you guys have been using Git for any length of time and have dealt with any of the confusing realities of uh, multiple development teams, you've probably already instituted certain aspects of it, maybe even the whole thing. And uh, the issues that it actually has, those are issues that you're going to have to deal with anyways. So using it might just be good to kind of force those issues to the front and kind of figure them out. Uh, it's easy to get going, easy to get started, and uh, since technically underneath it all, it's still Git. You can do anything that you did before with Git, any of the cool little tip, uh, you know, uh, tips and tricks and things like that that you like. You can still do them. And uh, if it's not working out for you, you can always just uh, kind of merge the uh, developments and uh, production branch back to master, get rid of the other feature branches, and it's like you never had it in the first place. But it's pretty good deal. Um, that's really all I can think of to cover right now. Um, any questions? It's late. Thanks, dude. And we all want to go home, so thanks. Okay.
Now, the one scenario, though, is that it's pretty fun. It's a uh, rise of the Mongo. Yeah, it's a private repository, so the it's not like master is really bad. No, no, no. That one is too big. That one is better than the other one. Oh, it's a full program. It's not terrible. I think it's only like 15 bucks, and it comes with like three additional scenarios or something. Yeah, probably just just use it. Yeah, probably just use it. Yeah, I think you use my kid. Um, although, I feel like it's pretty bad. Yeah, right. But uh, we, we, we are experimenting right now, like I said, with it. We do have two people working on the future to um, just establish each other. Tom.
we'll stop that.